Okay, I couldn't let the whole summer go by without at least one Porgy video. So, here we are. What I'll do is I'll leave a link in the video description to a short playlist that will cover all the gear and tackle as well as a few catch and cooks involving Porgy. Um, we did quite a few of these catch and cooks and definitely check out the sweet and sour. I think that might have been my cousin's favorite porgy recipe and he had like six pounds of it so in any case back to fishing in this first clip I'm using a larger lipless crankbait this is a size 6 Rappler rip and wrap and I'm really trying for fluke but that doesn't go so well late season Porgies are everywhere. They're on all the hard structure and in Long Island Sound that's pretty much all you get is hard structure. Um, this year the numbers are pretty much the same but I definitely notice a slight decrease in size. But with the crankbaits and other hard baits if you use small jigs you're definitely still calling for quality. So most of these fish are well for 14, 15 inches, and there were a few that were pushing 16 mixed in. So after this fish, I switched back to the size 5 Rapala Slab Wrap, which is the mainstay for my porgy fishing. I mean, that's pretty much all I use. And I'm back using the small spinning rod. Um, I'll leave a link on the upper right hand corner to a review of this rod. It's, it's a very interesting rod. This thing weighs under three ounces. Retails for about $130 and I might pick up a couple more. In any case, in terms of technique, I'm using these lipless crankbaits as a jig. Basically just pulling them off the bottom and letting it sink. And Again, just like in the fluke video, you can let it fall on slack line or you can let it glide back towards you. With porgies, I feel I catch bigger ones when it's just free falling. But in any case, I replace all the treble hooks with just a tail single hook. You can see that right there. And hook of percentages is pretty good. Um, but if you miss a fish, there's a million other porgies just waiting to hit your bait. So, I lift the rod tip and what I'm pausing is when the bait is gliding back down. If you feel any sort of tick in your line or rod tip, you set the hook. So, as opposed to if you're jigging with soft plastics, you're, you're pretty much reeling down all your slack until you feel the fish. Like we talked about in the fluke video, this is completely different. Um, it's a hard bait, they're not going to hold on to it, there's no scent or flavor. So these porgies basically come up and they just slash at your bait. A lot of these hookups will be outside the mouth, under the chin, and whatnot, but late in the season, they, they're they eating it pretty good. Early season when the water is a little bit colder, you're going to miss a lot more fish, but again, not that big of a deal. Porgy fishing is the most relaxing fishing for me because I don't really care about size or catching limits or anything like that. It's just go out there and catch as many as you want. So I find this using the crankbaits is just it, it's more fun. There's no mess. I don't have to deal with clams or squid or even gulp. I mean, gulp is pretty much like live bait it gets over everything and um, I will say the single hook I'm using is the owner replacement singles and they are by far the best single hooks I can find domestically I am NOT a fan of the VMC single hooks their point geometry is all wrong and their points roll over I mean just on fish I don't even have to hit a rock after three or four porgies the point is gone and I have to resharpen so in any case here for the rest of this video I'll just show you almost the entire clips of these porgies and like I said this is just a summer ritual for me at this point um, 
jig up, watch your line, and yep, there you go. Okay. Definitely good practice for other species. Um, Elias once said that porgy fishing is like freshwater pan fishing on crack, and it absolutely is. Um, people jig for crappie with tiny jigs, very light line, just to just to keep their jig game fresh, you know, and the mechanics of jigging from one thirty second ounce jigs to three pound jigs in deep water is pretty similar. So as often as you can do it is is definitely good practice. The reel I'm using is the Daiwa Tatula LT. I think a 1500 size or a 2000 size is the smallest body size. And I have to say, I would jump up to the ballistic just for the mag seal. I've become a huge believer in mag seal. Um, the two reels I have with mag seal just in salt water, they last longer. Or I should say, they feel new for going on two seasons now. And that's not the case with this Tatula, unfortunately. Um, if I'm just fishing fresh water, the Tatula is great. The line I'm using is eight pound J braid and the leader is six or eight pound Seaguar STS. You can probably get away with 10 or 12 pound, but it's not really a question of visibility when it comes to porgies. It's, it's more just lure action and you're using a small hook and like I said earlier a lot of times they're not hooked very well so you're using very light drag anyway and these porgies are not going to bring you into the rocks so I mean 17 inch porgy you can land very easily on six pound line. One thing I wanted to mention is I spooled all my reels up with the new Jaybreak Grand at the start of the season and halfway through I stripped all of it. I'm not a fan. I went right back to the original Jaybraid. I I felt the Grand had a looser weave. It was it was fluffier and on my bait casters it was giving me pretty bad backlashes, which happens every once in a while, but not nearly with the same frequency on the original J braid um, versus the Grand. So definitely not a fan of that. And I thought just in case I mentioned Grand in a previous video, I'm not sure if I did, but if I did, I retract my endorsement. So that one hit like a freight train and every now and then they're gonna do that I'm in pretty shallow water I'm sitting in maybe eight to nine feet and some of these larger porgy are hanging out pretty shallow especially a couple hours north and south of high tide so I'm generally casting into two feet of water and just working the bait back to the boat so I'm sure there are bigger porgies deeper as well but I, I find these these shallow porgy to be the most fun and it's just so different from what you normally associate with porgy fishing in the past you know sinker two dropper loops and you're dropping sandworms so certainly there's no chumming involved when you're fishing like this it's just sort of a run and gun deal you catch a few and Again, early season, they're more skittish. Once you catch a few out of a school in, say, June, early July, the rest of them seem to turn off a little bit. So you just pedal your way to the next rock pile, catch a few more there, come back to the first one, and they're ready to bite again. Not, not very challenging fishing, but that's, that's kind of why I like it.
And one other thing is, I've noticed, at least in this area, porgies don't tend to like very fast current. So when the tide is really ripping, they tend to stay on the back side, on the lee side of structure. But when the tide is just sort of gently coming in or going out, they'll stack up on the front side of that piece of structure. So the side that's getting washed in current. In any case, drop-offs are definitely high percentage areas. And the porgies do tend to school according to size. So if I'm catching 12, 13 inch porgy one after another, I'll just move over a little bit. And as you see, this one definitely ate it very well, just choked it. And I have noticed porgies, they seem to target the tail hook to the point where even when I have both the belly and tail hook on, I never catch one on the belly hook. So therefore, I just take it off. And in the gear video I linked down below, you'll see how I balance it out with just a single tail hook. In any case, this is right before I went back towards the launch and probably the biggest porgy that day. Although, once again, they're, they're just not quite the same size as they were last year. But still a lot of fun. And by the way, since you are using such light line and small hooks, it's, it's also good practice just in terms of raising your landing percentage. Um, knowing how light to set your drag and watching your rod angles and how to maneuver the fish around the kayak and into your net. Um, Landing percentage is not that important for porgies, but for other species, definitely. And I do find this good practice. In fact, I'm making a whole video on raising your landing percentage on light gear in the kayak. So definitely stay tuned for that. So this fish came in slightly deeper water and you see the coloration is much lighter, like that classic silver porgy look. But th this one was definitely thick. That thing. 
Okay, that was my Porgy video for 2019. Again, definitely check out the links I left below if you're interested in this, this type of fishing and also the catch and cooks. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.